Year 13, Chapter 8, Trigonometric Identities, Lesson 1, Compound Angle Formulae. So we're going to learn about a series of new trigonometric identities. We're going to start off by deriving a set of trigonometric identities which we call the compound angle formulae. So let's start off with a triangle which I'm going to label the vertices of A, B and C. Now from point C I'm going to drop a perpendicular to the base of the triangle so we have a 90 degree angle and I'm going to label point D where this perpendicular line meets the line AB. Now let's label this side here BC as little a lowercase a and let's label the side AC as lowercase b. I'm also going to label some angles this angle here angle theta and this angle here angle phi. Now the distance from C down to D is x. Now let's think about areas of these triangles. So the area of triangle ABC, that's the larger triangle, is equal to the area of triangle ACD plus the area of triangle BCD. So the two separate triangles add up to the area of the larger triangle. So let's start off with the area of triangle ABC. Now that will equal half multiplied by A multiplied by B multiplied by the sine of the angle in between which is theta plus phi. So we're using this angle here and then these two sides which I partially highlighted in yellow. So the area of the triangle is a half multiplied by two sides multiplied by the sine of the angle in between the two sides. Let's repeat that for triangle ACD. So I can use this side, this side and the angle in between and say the area is a half BX sine theta. And then lastly triangle BCD I can use this side and this side and the angle in between and the area is a half AX sine phi. Now we can of course multiply through by 2 so we get AB sine theta plus phi equals BX sine theta plus AX sine phi. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is find out a little bit more about X and how else we can express it. Now if I look at this triangle here, triangle ACD, it's a right angle triangle, I can identify that cos theta is the adjacent which is X divided by the hypotenuse which is B which gives me a neat result that x is equal to b cos theta. Now, I can do something similar if I use the other triangle. So this triangle, a right angle triangle BCD. This time, if I identify cos phi, the adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is lowercase a, which gives me x is equal to a cos phi. Now what I'm going to do is replace this x here with this orange result here and I'm going to replace this x here with this green result here. So my identity will no longer feature x. So let's see what happens. We've got a b sine theta plus phi equals B, 
a cos phi sine theta plus a b cos theta sine phi. Now, there is a common factor of a b in each part of this, which means we can divide through by that. And this then gives me sine of theta plus phi is equal to sine theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi. Now, we need to make sure that we fully understand this result. It is the first of the compound angle formulae. Look carefully at what takes place. We have sine of theta plus phi, which can be expressed as sine theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi. So look at the switching order here. So this is the first and the simplest of the compound angle formulae. Now, there are other compound angle formulae, and we're going to use this result to find the next one. I'm going to take the result we've just derived, and I'm going to replace the angle phi by the angle negative phi. So what happens to the identity when I do that? So we have sine of theta plus negative phi, which we'll simplify in a second, which must equal sine theta cos of negative phi plus cos theta sine of negative phi. Now, the left-hand side of this is, of course, sine of theta minus phi. But what does the right-hand side simplify to? Now, cos of negative phi is simply equal to cos of phi. We can see that from the symmetry of the cosine graph. If you look at a quick sketch of the cosine graph, you can see that for these negative angles, you get exactly the same cosine value as for the positive value. So cos of negative phi is the same as cos of phi. Now, similarly, sine of negative phi can be simplified, but it equals negative sine phi. And again, we can look at a sketch of the graph to understand why. So look at this quick sketch graph. These angles here are negative, these angles here are positive. And if, for instance, we worked out sine of 30, it would be 0.5. Sine of negative 30 would equal negative 0.5. So sine of a negative angle is negative the sine value of that angle. So how can we use that here? Well, we can go back to what we were working on. And in place of cos negative phi, I can write cos phi. And then over here, I have cos theta, as always. But here, in place of sine negative phi, I can replace that with negative sine phi. And what I will do is put the negative here. This then gives me the second identity of my compound angle formulae. That sine theta minus phi is equal to sine theta cos phi minus cos theta sine phi. Compare and contrast that with the identity that we already had up here. Look at the similarities. Look at the slight differences. Look at the relationship between the two. So we're now going to go back to the original identity and we're going to derive another identity from this. So this time we're going to replace theta by 90 minus theta. So everywhere there's a theta in this, we're going to replace it with 90 minus theta. So what does that then give us? Well, that gives me sine 
of 90 minus theta plus 5 equals sine of 90 minus theta cos phi plus cos 90 minus theta sine phi. Now, what can I do to further simplify this? Well, this is where we need to take a very close look at sine of 90 minus theta and also at cos of 90 minus theta. So let's consider a right angle triangle as sketched. Let's suppose one of the angles is theta and then the other angle has got to be 90 minus theta. Now I'm going to label the three sides of the triangle, hopefully in a non-confusing manner, by calling them x, y and z. Now the first thing that I want you to do is focus on the sine of 90 minus theta. Now the sine of 90 minus theta is its opposite, which is y, divided by its hypotenuse, which is z. Now, can you see that if we then work out the cos of theta, which is the angle up at the top, well, that's the adjacent, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is z. So that shows us that sine 90 minus theta is the same as cos theta. Now, similarly, if we work out cos of 90 minus theta, well, that's the adjacent x divided by the hypotenuse z. But what about sine of theta up at the top? Well, that's its opposite, which is x divided by its hypotenuse z. And those two are the same. So cos of 90 minus theta is the same as sine theta. So this then gives me the result that sine of 90 minus theta. In fact, I'm going to write this as 90 minus and then in brackets theta minus phi, and you can see that's equivalent to what was above if you expand the brackets, and this is equal to cos theta cos phi plus sine theta sine phi. And where do we go from here? Well, look at the way that I wrote out the left-hand side. I specifically set it out as sine of 90 minus an angle. And we've seen from over here that sine of 90 minus an angle is cos of the angle. So the left-hand side works out to be cos of theta minus phi. And we now know that this is equal to cos theta cos phi plus, so watch that sine change, sine theta sine phi. So this is the third of what will be six compound angle formulae. So now we're going to use this identity to find the next result. So what I'm going to do is replace phi by negative phi. So there's a phi here, a phi here, and a phi here. So let's replace each of these with negative phi. So I get cos theta minus minus phi equals cos theta cos of minus phi plus sine theta sine negative phi. So remember, we were replacing phi in each position with negative phi. But we know that cos of negative phi is cos phi from the work we've done previously. And we know that sine of negative phi is negative sine phi, thinking back to those trigonometric graphs. So this then gives me cos theta plus phi 
equals cos theta cos phi minus sine theta sine phi. So I now have the next of the compound angle formulae. So we're now going to derive the tan compound angle formulae using the fact that tan x is equivalent to sine x over cos x. So using this result, we know that tan of theta plus phi must be equal to sine of theta plus phi all over cos theta plus phi. Let's use the identities that we have derived for sine theta plus phi and cos theta plus phi. So this is sine theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi in the numerator. Think back to the identity that we derived just now. And in the denominator, this is going to be cos theta cos phi minus sine theta sine phi. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is then divide all four terms, both terms in the numerator and both terms in the denominator. We're going to divide every term by cos theta cos phi. So in the numerator and in the denominator, cos theta cos phi. I'm actually going to write this out in full so you can see it. So sine theta cos phi over cos theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi over cos theta cos phi. So these are the two terms in the numerator. And this is all being divided by, in the denominator, we've got two terms as well, cos theta cos phi, which is also going to be divided by cos theta cos phi, subtract sine theta sine phi over cos theta cos phi. So I took all four of the terms here, 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 and here, and divided each of them by cos theta cos phi. Let's now simplify everything that can simplify. So cos phi and cos phi cancel here and here, and cos theta and cos theta cancel here and here, here and here, cos theta and cos theta, and cos phi and cos phi cancel, and then there are no cancellations in the bottom right-hand corner. So what is left? Well, here we're left with sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta. Here we're left with sine phi over cos phi, which is tan phi. And in the denominator, well, bottom left-hand corner, we're left with 1. Bottom right-hand corner, something a little bit more interesting. This part here is tan theta. And this part here is tan phi. And this is the identity. It tells us that tan theta plus phi is equivalent to tan theta plus tan phi over 1 minus tan theta tan phi. And that's a compound angle formula for tan theta plus phi. So we're now going to derive the final compound angle formula. And we're going to use this result that we have just derived. And I'm going to replace phi by negative phi. So where have I got phi? I've got one here, I've got one here, and I've got one here. And we're going to replace it with negative phi. So this gives me tan theta plus negative phi equals tan theta plus tan negative phi all over 1 minus tan theta tan negative phi. So what do we know about tan of negative phi? So I want you to again consider a tan graph which would look a bit like that close to the origin. Now these values here are positive 
and these values here are negative. And look at the tan values. Let's imagine we were working out tan of 45 degrees, it would equal 1. Well, what about tan of negative 45? It would equal negative 1. So can we see, hopefully, that tan of negative phi simply equals negative tan phi? You can see that with tan 45 and tan negative 45, we can see that tan of negative 45 is negative 1, which is negative tan of 45, as tan 45 is 1. And we can use that to help us here. So the left-hand side simplifies to tan of theta minus phi, and in the right-hand side, we can replace tan of negative phi with negative tan phi. So in the denominator, we get 1, and then because this is equal to negative tan phi, and there's already a negative here, we get plus tan theta tan phi. And this is the last of the compound angle formulae. So we're going to finish off by summarising the compound angle formulae. Now, why are they called compound angle formulae? Well, this is because when you add theta and phi together, or when you add two angles together, you create a compound angle. Now, rather than using theta and phi when we summarise these results, I'm going to simplify it by using a different notation, just because sometimes it's complex to keep writing out theta and phi. So let's call the angles A and B, first of all. So sine of A plus B is equivalent to, and really we need to use the equivalency symbol because these are identities, sine of A plus B is equivalent to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Now, the only difference that occurs if it's sine A minus B is it would be sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. So we can combine the two identities using the plus minus symbol. And you just read along horizontally as you are identifying the result you want. Now, what about cos of A plus B? Well, looking back, we can see that this was equivalent to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. And if you want cos of A minus B, then there has to be a plus. So cos of A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So you just read along horizontally as needed. Now, the final result was for tan. So we have tan of A plus B, first of all, which was equivalent to tan of A plus tan of B. And... All of that divided by 1 minus the product of tan A and tan B. But of course, we might want tan of A minus B, in which case we need a minus here and a plus here in the denominator. So all six compound angle formulae can be combined in these three results here. And in a minute, we'll see how we can use these results to carry out various different activities. So let's start off with using the compound angle formulae to solve an equation. So we are going to solve the equation sine theta minus pi by 3 equals cos theta plus pi by 3. And we're going to do this for values of theta between 2 pi and zero. So solving a trigonometric equation in radians. Quite a lot to do here. Now, look at these. These are compound angles. So we're going to need to use the compound angle formulae. On the left-hand side, sine of theta minus pi by 3. That's going to be sine theta cos pi by 3 minus cos theta sine pi by 3. So I've simply just made use of the identities that we have seen. And on the right-hand side, cos theta, cos pi by 3. And this is going to be minus. Remember, the cosine compound angle formula has the signs perhaps the other way around to what we might, might assume they would be. 
So minus sine theta sine pi by 3. Now, we can fill in some of these values quite easily. So sine theta multiplied by cos pi by 3, which is a half. Take away cos theta and then sine pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. And then on the right hand side, again, we have a half and we have root 3 over 2. So let's multiply all four terms by 2. So we end up with sine theta minus root 3 cos theta equals cos theta minus root 3 sine theta. I'm going to collect the sine theta terms on one side and the cos theta terms on the other side. So I've got sine theta plus root 3 sine theta and that is equal to cos theta plus root 3 cos theta. Let's factorise sine theta 1 plus root 3 and that equals cos theta 1 plus root 3. Now let's divide through by 1 plus root 3 which cancels out and then we're left with sine theta equals cos theta. Divide by cos theta which is fine because it's not vanishing anywhere and we get sine theta over cos theta equals 1 which of course simplifies to tan theta equals 1. Now we can then solve this trigonometric equation and find that theta equals pi by 4 and theta equals 5 pi by 4 using a sketch of a trigonometric graph or the cast diagram. So next example involves small angle approximations. Can we find an approximate expression for sine pi by 6 plus theta for small values of theta? Now can you see that's a compound result here? So let's use the correct identity for sine of a plus b. So this is going to equal sine pi by 6 cos theta plus cos pi by 6 sine theta. Now, we can then substitute in the fact that sine pi by 6 is a half. So this is a half cos theta. And then cos pi by 6 is root 3 over 2. So we have root 3 over 2 sine theta. Now, we know from the work we've done on small angle approximations that cos theta is approximately 1 minus a half theta squared and sine theta is approximately theta for small angles. So, I can then make use of these results and say that this is equal to a half, 1 minus a half theta squared plus root 3 over 2 theta and this then simplifies to give me a half minus a quarter theta squared plus root 3 over 2 theta and that is my small angle approximation for this result here.